Hi guys. It is another exciting Saturday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. So, uh, the rest of people with lives are out doing what people do on Saturday night. Uh, I am sitting here with my little dog uh, having an, a collapsed margarita by myself. On this big Saturday night, that would be Saturday, June 11th, <clears throat> 2022. So, uh, you know, Saturday is supposed to be my hopium apocalyptimism roundup. And uh, I was thinking about getting, you know, digging one of those up and getting it together. But then I opened up the mainstream media here today and right here the second biggest story on planet earth right here from uh yahoo news this fellow named ben adler ben adler who looks like he's about 22 years old a senior editor at yahoo news has been running this uh it's a pretty decent series for the mainstream media just called climate change and good Lord, this young man has been doing his uh, mainstream media doomer homework. Uh, <laughs> not exactly uh, laughing at uh, Apocalyptimus, but just pointing out how ridiculous Apocalyptimus and Hopium addicts are getting at this point. So, uh, this is a long involved article. Good Lord. <coughs> it's like the James Missioner version of a mainstream media news story. And it is titled Biden. Biden. Who the hell is that? I think Biden is uh, the name of Biden. I, I know I've. I've heard this name, B-I-D-E-N. I vaguely recognize this person. Uh, anyway, whoever this Biden is, he is on the verge of losing on climate change. And as I say, this is a long, involved, three-part, there's like three books in here, uh, and we're just going to kind of graze through it. Okay, so a little bit from the first book. Despite assuming office with what activists, activists describe as the most ambitious climate change agenda in history, and the sick, twisted, ironic joke about it is that it probably is the most ambitious climate change agenda in history. Uh, which is actually the, uh, the main point, what should have been the main point of this story. Alright. Biden has experienced a series of setbacks that threaten to leave him with little progress on the issue while showing just how hard contending with climate change can be in a choke point filled federal system such as that of the US. The president is facing backsliding. Yep he is. <clears throat> the president is facing backsliding on almost every front in his fight against climate change. His clean energy proposals are stuck in the Senate. Surging oil and ga gas prices have even Democratic state governments, such as here in New York, baby, cutting gasoline taxes and the need to wean America's European allies off Russian fossil fuels has led his administration to propose boosting gas exports. Also, a bill passed by the House of Representatives could get in the way of offshore wind energy expansion. 
we can only hope. Meanwhile, the president's broad power to regulate under existing laws is being constricted. Yep, right now the Supreme Court is on the verge of a limiting uh, of limiting the EPA's ability to regulate carbon dioxide. This is Jake Schmidt, Senior Strategic Director for International Climate at the Natural Resources Defense Council, summing it up, quote, It's hard to be a glass-half-full kind of person at this moment. <laughs> yes, it is. So anyway, uh, Ben goes on and on just uh, bringing us up to date with all of the uh, the failures uh, of the latest battle uh, to save the planet. So in book two is when he dives into the hopium. So book two of this uh, <clears throat> novel is titled High Hopes. High ha. High ha. High ha. Uh, oops. All right. Of all those wishes that Biden's tenure would be transformative, perhaps none were as desperate. <laughs> perhaps none were as desperate as those of the climate change activist. <clears throat> Through decades of mounting evidence that the burning of fossil fuels is causing the planet to warm, the United States has taken virtually no steps to reverse that trend. Though the last two Democratic presidents have tried <coughs> Anyway, moving along, uh, yes, uh, anywhere, anyway, after that little interruption, uh, that little hopium, the last two Democratic presidents have tried to save the damn planet. Yeah, you know, it's still, after all of these years, my favorite, and you can still find this on YouTube, I'm sure, is Farrakh Obama. Farrakh Obama, uh, you know, the world's biggest cheerleader of fracking, uh, out there in front of, uh, standing in front of this, this stack of oil pipelines, in, in front of these damn planet eaters in Cushing, Oklahoma, bragging correctly that his administration, Barack Obama's administration, laid more miles of fossil fuel pipelines in this country than any other president. Anyway, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton uh, saving the planet. Pull your head out of your you-know-what. Anyway, but Biden campaigned in 2020 and assumed office the next year under different conditions than those that greeted Farrakh in 2009. Yes, Biden ran on a $2 trillion proposal to address climate change through investments in transitioning to clean energy and he promised to stop selling new leases for oil and gas drilling on federal lands and waters. Yes, with the climate crisis rapidly worsening, the cost of renewable energy and electric vehicles dropping, and youth-led activism, can you see Greta Thunberg pushing mainstream I just about said the L word, the, the LD word on this channel. Anyway, uh, yes, pushing mainstream Democrats, such as Biden, to embrace a bolder agenda 
to save this planet, there was the possibility, at least, that the federal government might take sufficient action to set the United States on the path to reaching net zero emissions by mid-century. You, you, you have every, you know, this article so far, had how many bright green lies uh, have we heard already in this crap? Uh, th th this is just the mainstream media regurgitating the bright green lies, but even the bright green lies are, uh, are, are, are failing. Yes. The net zero emissions by mid-century, according to the IPCC, that is the benchmark that must be reached to stay below one and a half degrees Celsius of global warming and avert the worst possible effects of climate change. Yes, that is, you know, when you set your bar low enough, anyway, so what did Joe Biden do to save the planet? Biden created two new climate-focused positions, appointing former Secretary of State John Kerry as his special envoy on climate change, and former EPA Administrator Gina McCarthy as his White House climate czar. All right, we have a special envoy and a climate czar to save the planet. What do you think, Sancho Panza? Are you encouraged? Joe Biden, a special envoy and a climate czar. You know, a special envoy is not enough to save the planet. We need a special envoy and a climate czar. Yes, Biden set out to attack climate change on multiple fronts, legislatively through Congress, administratively through executive branch rulemaking, and diplomatically through negotiations with other countries. But of course, you, you, you know, when you're the head clown, uh, when you're the laughing stock uh, of the rest of the planet, it, it, Joe Biden negotiating with other countries. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you try to think of the biggest dweeb that you ever, uh, just try to all right, imagine, going back to high school, um, imagine the biggest dweeb in the entire, in your entire class, you, you know, the one that, that, that like, when anybody saw the dude coming down the hall, they, they were like, you know, walk over to the other side of the hall. Imagine that guy negotiating uh, with, with other countries. Uh, I, I can imagine what people, what people are saying behind this idiot's back when this guy shows up at some international climate meeting. And then, of course... We have his Build Back Better bill. Yes, his Build Back Better bill. Uh huh. Oh God! Then he goes through. Then Ben goes through all of this uh, political crap that nobody gives a damn about. Uh, Anyway, so I guess the bottom line is the White House stuffed the Build Back Better bill with $555 billion over 10 years in subsidies for clean energy production, energy efficient heat pumps to save the planet, and do not forget electric vehicle deployment. Uh, it doesn't mention in here how much the Save the Planet asphalt companies 
got out of this. I'm pretty sure it was $351 million. Three, I'm pretty sure I have this right. The big asphalt corporations got $351 million of this uh, taxpayer uh, looting of the pigsty uh, to pave the planet, to save the planet. We're going to build back better! Pave the planet to save the planet is what I call that. All right. And don't forget, last November in a speech at the United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26, Biden told the assembled world leaders, yes, that his domestic agenda would make the United States the largest cumulative emitter of greenhouse gases, the biggest player in the global team effort to stop the climate crisis from worsening. There you go. All right. This is Joe Biden talking to world leaders at the UN at COP26. My Build Back Better framework will make historic investments in clean energy, asphalt corporations, bridge builders, cement companies, yes, <clears throat> you know, those, those clean energy kind of people. The most significant investment to deal with the climate crisis that any advanced nation has ever made. We are going to cut U.S. greenhouse gas emissions by well over a gigaton, whatever the hell that means. I'm sure uh, Joe Biden has no more idea of what a damn gigaton is than I do. Or San Sancho Panza, what the hell is a gigaton? Anyway, while making it more affordable for consumers to save on their own energy bills. Yes, I'm sure we can all sit here and celebrate how we are all <clears throat> saving on our own energy bills since November. I know my energy bills have certainly, uh, oh, anyway, guys, I, more and more of this crap from the hopium, but we're going to get back to reality. Uh, so after the hopium, Ben Adler, uh, at least comes back to reality with book three, Risk of Monster Failure. Yes, the monster failure of the most ambitious climate change attack plan in history. Climate policy wonks. I love that word wonk. We're going to have to look up the definition of what is a wonk. All right. Definition. Definition of wonk. All right. A wonk. A wonk is a person who takes an enthusiastic or excessive interest in the specialized details of a particular subject or field, especially, especially political policy. There you go. So these are climate change wonks. Love that word. Climate policy wonks are huh, are huh, are huh, hopeful that Congress will pass climate legislation before Republicans likely regain control of the body in midterm elections, but they admit that failure would be, or shall we say, will be devastating. Yes, 
I have no idea. Somewhere back in book number two, they uh, introduced some clueless moron, apocalyptimist, hopium addict named Pierce. Somebody Pierce. I have no idea who the hell Pierce is other than he or she is a climate walk. So anyway, climate walk Pierce, whoever that is, quote, I am super optimistic, believe it or not, that the bill formerly known as Build Back Better actually has a shot of moving in the near term, and that actually will advance a transformational set of investments. Yes. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, if a climate bill does not pass the Senate this year, Climate Walk Pierce said it would constitute, quote, a monster failure. I'm not making up this quote, guys. I am not making up this quote. This is actually directly off the mainstream media, quote, if that window closes, yes, if that window closes, it will be a decade before the politics are aligned to pass ambitious climate legislation. Close quote. Yes. And then, uh... And then they go back, uh, and, and, and you know, and and look at Barack Obama's more than one way to skin a cat. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna put the link. If if you really want to read all of this gobbledygook, you're welcome to. I'm just bringing you the highlights. Okay. Not only would, and I would say will, this subtle difference. You know how the mainstream media is always using the word, the conditional would, instead of the unconditional will. So I'm going to go from the conditional to the unconditional, from would to will. Not only will it be virtually impossible, you can strike the word, change the word would to will, and strike the word virtually. Not only will it be impossible for the United States to meet its pledges to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by half this decade without legislation, but failure to keep that promise, a promise made repeatedly at the UN climate negotiations in Glasgow, would also discourage other major emitters, such as China, to increase the ambition of their own climate plans. Yes. Uh, this is uh, some climate walk named Schmidt. I don't know who this Schmidt character is. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it is very hard to see how the U.S. can meet its 50% to 52% target. And if the U.S. can't do that, then its leverage and credibility to convince other countries to step up drops off a cliff, close quote. I assure you, uh, whether it was Donald Trump for one reason and Joe Biden for all the other reasons, any credibility that the United States has at this point, whether Donald Trump on one side or Joe Biden, it makes no difference. It's for different reasons, but the United States has lost 
all credibility on the global stage. We are a laughing stock. We deserve to be a laughing stock. This is one of the many signs of an empire in decline is when an empire becomes a laughing stock. We have gone from Caligula to, uh, I guess, uh, Nero. Uh, did they go from Caligula to Nero when Rome finally uh, crashed? I guess it was Julius Caesar who uh, took the knife. Anyway. Okay, then they talk about, speaking of uh, Caligula, uh, as the Caligula administration rolled back more than 100 environmental uh, regulations, now Biden's executive actions are already also being thrown into doubt by the courts. Yes. Um, they're talking about, uh, then, then they uh, get to this whole confusing thing about drilling for oil and gas on federal lands. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Biden's, the Biden administration is still planning to sell oil and gas lease sales for 144,000 acres of federal land in Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada, North Dakota, Montana, Utah, and Wyoming this month. Uh, <clears throat> and experts say that after the Supreme Court likely invalidating one of the EPA's regulatory tools, in a forthcoming ruling, future regulations on carbon emissions from power plants may not be as strong as previously planned. And of course, to top it all off, the high price of oil and natural gas is leading elected officials to respond with subsidies for drivers. Biden has released tens of millions of barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and even pro-climate Democratic governors of progressive states are following suit. Yes, like here in New York, baby. Uh... <clears throat> Biden has also announced plans to build liquefied natural gas export terminals, even though LNG has higher greenhouse gas emissions than conventional gas. Okay. Uh, the White House did not respond to requests for comments on the story, on this story, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're going to, uh, we're going to wrap this up with a quote from Climate Walk, Sam Ricketts, a co-founder and co-director for Evergreen Action, a climate-focused activist group. Take it away, Climate Walk, Sam Ricketts. Quote, There are meaningful headwinds against progress. Some of those legislative, some are political. The president took office with the boldest agenda of any president on this front in some time. And to be clear, important progress has been made here. Of course, he did not list one example of that. However, it is going to be incredibly 
difficult to meet our climate commitments as a country without passing major investments through Congress. He conceded. Yes. Anyway, guys, so uh, that is the number two biggest story on the planet where even the mainstream media is uh, throwing in the towel on this and sounding uh, more and more like the doers that uh, they should be. Uh, you know, any, is there anybody on this planet well, certainly listening to this channel that believes for one minute, one minute that Joe Biden, Joe Biden, or, or the Democratic Party, the little lefties or whatever are going to do a damn thing to turn this train around. Uh, you know, surely there's not anybody left on this planet uh, actually believing for one minute that Joe Biden and the mainstream Democrats are, are, are going to be do any more to save this planet than Caligula. Please. That's just this country. This is not a political issue. This is an issue of too damn many people on this planet, period. Anyway, uh, I've got to go cook up some, uh, some fried wontons for my dinner and let this little dog off this table. Get out there and enjoy your fried wontons while you still can. Bye guys. Yes little dog, I know it, we don't have a life. This is what happens when you don't have a life. Bye guys.